A lot of people are losing their mind because Google just announced a protocol called A2A that once more changes the way how we interact with agentic systems. And now, while the majority of people are still learning about MCP, they're getting completely lost in what is happening. Now, I'm about to change that because in this video, I will give you the peace of mind of understanding what A2A is in the first place, why it is there, and most importantly, why it does not replace MCP, but complements it. Or well, in the end, it's superior than MCP, but let me show you. Right here on my screen, you can see the block article that Google released once they announced A2A or also called agent to agent. Now at this point you're probably aware of the word protocol because it has been the same thing for MCP which they by the way incorporated into their name model context protocol. But just to give you a quick rundown a protocol is nothing else than a set of rules that is being established to hopefully create a standard. Right? So we are talking English with each other and that's not my native language so we decided to create the standard English to be able to communicate information between each other. A protocol is basically doing nothing else than that but just on a technology level, so helping technology to communicate in one way or the other. And in that exact case, it is focused around agents. That's why it's also called agent to agent, because you basically establish a protocol, so a way of communicating from an agent to another agent. And if we talk about agent, we obviously talk about AI agent, because everything's an AI these days, especially if you've seen my channel. So their goal is to establish a standard that helps agents to communicate with agents, that are completely different and completely unrelated, just like we are talking right now. Now to explain that to you more visual, I'm gonna get out my really poor drawing skills and we're gonna visualize how that is currently looking in case we would connect an AI agent to an AI agent without A to A, so without Google's protocol. Now the way it would work, and by the way, in case you don't know what an AI agent is, simply imagine it like a chat completion of OpenAI. It's probably the easiest, right? You send in some information, you send in information to an API. That API can respond with something and it can either respond with a tool call action or it can also respond with just natural text right this is a very basic example but what it means is that you have an ai agent that can reason based on the available functionality that we give it or it can also just message you something right it can send you a response or it can do a tool call it, it can initiate an interaction with an external service somewhere in the world so if you have an AI agent that, for example, can manage our calendar, we could have a set of tools like checking the availability, booking an appointment, maybe canceling an appointment, and they can be accessible to the AI agent by us creating a tool that is literally nothing else than a connection to this external calendar, which we then can use to retrieve information and update things. Now that is a very basic example, but now imagine instead of using an external tool directly like Google Calendar, you wanna talk to an AI agent. This is also possible and this would also be possible using a tool call. So you would do nothing else than talking to another service, but instead of that service, it's an AI agent. So you can imagine that if we have the AI agent here, the way we will talk to another AI agent is again by literally just a request or an API call, how we call it, which then would have the possibility of talking to that agent for one specific use case. Now, while this somehow works, it means that you would always need to create all kind of manual requests back and forth to actually get the information that you want, which isn't really efficient, especially if you have a lot of different tool calls and you want to maybe have them interact with each other somewhere else. And this AI agent needs to also be created somewhere, right? Meaning that if you need to create it, which is most likely gonna be the case, you also need to make sure that it complies with all the standards of this AI agent. So A2A's protocol is nothing else than the replacement of what we have here as an API, which means that instead of connecting it directly to the agent, we can literally just have an A2A server, that's the way how we call it, is then connected with a call to this one, which can then basically talk to the actual AI agent. Now, the thing is that the A2A server is nothing else than an AI agent by itself. So we could, for example, merge both of them together under the same kind of umbrella. So I would literally just put this on top, which means now we have the A2A server, which also is an AI agent that then has access to all of the other integrations that we want to interact with. Now, it sounds complicated, but in the end, it's literally nothing else of establishing a standard between one AI agent and another one without creating all of the manual code around it and making sure things are compatible. So the goal is to remove the need for making things compatible by just introducing a standard, so a set of rules. Now to give you a very brief explanation on how that works on a technical level, now I'm not gonna dive into the tech details, but I want to give you a high level overview of what the technical things look like so you get an understanding because I believe it helps you to understand A2A in the first place. Now given that, let's just head to the documentation and I'm gonna use an example that I found right here in their GitHub repository. And don't be afraid, it looks complex, but I'm gonna make it very simple. We always have, same thing like with MCP, we have a client and we have a server, right? A client is basically nothing else than your agentic system. In that case, 
case is basically an AI agent that communicates with another AI agent, within, which in this case is the A2A server. So these are the two things, meaning that this is your system and this is going to be the A2A server that hopefully is being hosted by whatever service provider you're going to use. I'm gonna show you that in a moment as well. But simply imagine that there needs to be a standard from both sides, meaning on your system that can then be used as well from the other side to basically establish that standard, right? And to make it very, very simple, we're gonna work with only two things for now, which is I think two of the main things that are really relevant for you to understand it. And the first thing is what they basically introduced as a, as a feature is called an agent card, which is nothing else than retrieving information from the A2A server, right? So we have the agent card, which I'm just gonna add here. And if you wanna call it in our terms, or maybe actually let's call it in our terms, we can call it get agent information because an agent card is nothing else than a CV that just describes what this AI agent does. You can think about things like the skills, the names, where it is hosted, documentation, basically all of the information that is relevant for the AI agent to understand what it can do, what it is there for, so the purpose and the skills. So it knows how to leverage that AI agent inside of the Agentic application itself. So this is the first thing that we can retrieve and we can obviously retrieve this directly from the A2A server, which I'm also gonna show you. And then the second thing, which is the more interactive part, is creating tasks. So we basically have with the client the possibility of creating creating tasks on the A2A server that initiates some sort of work, right? And this is the key aspect of it because obviously we want our AI agent to send information. So it basically should talk to the other AI agent and do things. And this is being done in tasks and tasks are being broken down into multiple things, which you can also read right here in the manual. You have the agent card and this I'm gonna link by the way as well down below in the description with all of the information. So you can download it as a cheat sheet with everything that I shared here. But simply imagine a task is something that you create, something that you want from the other AI agent, and they can basically then communicate with each other with messages. And there's also something called an artifact, which is nothing else than a response, or let's say the actual final result of the task. And this is a really, really cool thing because the A2A server can decide by itself when to send this artifact, which is usually done after the task has been completed or it has failed. So in case there's a task that not only takes a few seconds, but maybe let's say it takes a few hours because this AI agent is connected to other systems that would need to do things. They would do some magic and they would then send information back to the AI agent. This one can just communicate and keep the communication up with the actual AI agent to keep them informed about the progress. And once they, once it has the final results, it can send an artifact, so a response or a, a result back to the AI agent and tell him that whatever he wanted is finalized or it didn't work out depending on the on the outcome right but then the AI agent can move on with its very own next task and basically just continue the cycle over and over again with whatever AI agents it wants to communicate with and this is incredible because now we are getting into building systems where agents can talk to agents and we don't even need to be involved in the really complex hierarchy on when to choose which specific agent or functionality but we can have the agent decide for itself which agent to choose and that agent can have multiple sub agents do tasks for us basically like a whole company of AI agents or an AI agent army that does things autonomously on our behalf even on a larger scale. Now to me that is mind-blowing and this is a massive innovation that I believe is a lot superior than MCP itself and for anyone that still struggles understanding MCP I'm gonna give you a quick rundown as well because MCP is basically another part which helps us to standardize the way on how we interact with tools inside of an assistant, right? So here we're talking about AI agent, but as you can imagine, every single AI agent has access to a set of tools that we predefine, like I mentioned earlier. If we want the agent to be able to book appointments or to check the availability, we need to give them access to that somehow. And we usually have done that by tool calling, meaning that we create a tool that is called check availability. This can literally then initiate the availability check to a calendar, fetch the information, send it back, and then use it inside of the agentic system. But now instead of doing these definitions manually, we can use MCP to have a standard that we just basically implement for Google Calendar. So instead of us creating every single endpoint by ourselves, we can use that MCP server to initiate a standard communication to a set of tools that the Google integration can now dynamically send back to our AI agent and inform him about the tools that are available and the agent can choose within itself which of those are really relevant. It is basically more of a complementing thing that is relevant for this A2A instead of actually replacing it. And because I'm pretty sure there's still a lot of question marks, Google also got you covered. They have a whole blog post right here inside of the documentation. It's also linked below the description where you can read more about why A2A and MCP go so well together. Now, I still believe A2A is superior because it has a lot more features 
and it focused more on the whole agentic system itself instead of just the automated tool calling, which I believe it can potentially even be just replaced by something else that doesn't need to necessarily be MCP, which kind of makes it more powerful for me so then mcp itself but anyways that out of the way i'm just going to show you another graphic that makes things hopefully a little bit easier to understand which is this nice agentic application system right here which google luckily created for us and you can imagine the following we have an agent right this is an agentic system that can basically has its own sub agents and that has a set of tools available that can be connected to either all of them maybe some tools to some of those agents etc and those tools are basically all within the same AI agent, right? Which would be your local one, for example, or whoever else hosts these kind of agents. And they are basically accessing those tools, hopefully then in that case, if you use the MCP protocol through an MCP server, right? So these agents can then have a standard to get and interact with their tools internally, while A2A is a level on top of it, where we not just only give them access to tools, but we allow them to talk to other agents, so to other agentic systems. And that's also why they have it right here. You can see a to a protocol basically can also talk to another agent. And this agent, again, can use an MCP server to do their things internally, basically standardizing that way and so on. This is the whole concept about it. And just to give it to you in a very few words, the A2A protocol focuses on helping AI agents to communicate with other AI agents, while MCP helps you to standardize the way on how a single AI agent talks with different tools inside of their agentic system. This is literally the only difference. And I hope that makes this whole thing a little bit more clear. And before I leave you, I want to tell you one more thing that I think is really, really important to understand because it is an issue that's probably gonna happen with this protocol as well. And we will most likely see again, A2A stores where people promote their very own A2A servers that you can use to do agentic things with it. Great, but again, same issue like we have with MCP right now. It is wild west out there and you probably know that there are so many people creating stores where you can host your own MCP servers, which I'm pretty sure is going to happen as well with A2A because in the end it's nothing else than again creating some sort of integration on a server or on some piece of code somewhere that you can use to create another AI agent that can interact with other tools or with other integrations. Now, the reason I want to mention that is because there are two differences between A2A and A2A. And one of them is a self-hosted version or a version that you control, meaning that you are actually the person that creates the A2A server, meaning that you have some sort of server or maybe even locally code running that you have implemented, that you have control over, that you can manipulate even if it is not your own code because someone else provides that as a template, right? Because as you will see as well, inside of the Google repository, you can just fetch those templates for the servers as well, which you will definitely see stores about. I can promise you that right now. Maybe not while you watch this video because it's very, very new, but in a couple of weeks, you will definitely see A2A stores. Now, the other thing where you actually want to look for is having the actual integration provider. So any kind of SaaS tool or reputable source, meaning that if you, for example, want to integrate Calendly or Cal.com, these providers can create their own A2A server and host them for you. So instead of you hosting those servers by yourself, which is obviously counterproductive, and has is combined with a lot of security risks, you have the chance of just integrating to a server that is hosted by one of the integrations you want to use. We're going to see this implemented more and more for different kinds of companies. And the big difference there is because you know if it's hosted by a company that you already trust, that you can also trust them with the A2A server, right? Because you know that the integration is solid, they created it, they most likely don't have any bad intention and you can use it to automate your agentic systems even further. So I believe this is the biggest thing that you need to understand, that you can leverage a hosted version from a reputable source, any kind of tools or integrations that integrate an A2A protocol, an A2A server that you can interact with, and then you can have those stores that probably promote all of those A2A protocol servers that you can just fetch on your own local system, run them there, and there's more risk involved, especially because it's gonna be the same thing like with MCP. We're gonna have Wild Wild West and everyone tries to create really cool A2A servers that you can just use right out of the box instead of creating them yourself. Now, with that said, I want to finish it off with just saying be cautious when looking into it, and nevertheless, definitely look into it because it's going to come and it's going to revolutionize the way how we interact with agentic systems once more. And I can't emphasize enough how important this is going to be in the future because this really allows us to build full agentic armies of employees, of systems that can do things on our behalf, that can do research, that can book things, that can manage sales agents, that can initiate calls. We've seen it all. And with VAPI's MCP release now, you see as well that all of those voice providers, they now push towards that direction of integrating those protocols 
protocols so they can leverage their software in future applications that support those protocols. Because this is going to be so powerful, it's obviously a massive win for them because they definitely know that there's going to be systems that will then start leveraging the SaaS providers that support those protocols. So it helps them to gain, first of all, more clients, to gain more and better reputations and to put their products at the forefront of one of the craziest industries out there. Now, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you've enjoyed this video and you would like to stay up to date in the AI space and know what's happening day in and day out, you should definitely check out our community where we focus fully on voice AI and anything around those agentic systems that we can leverage to create awesome solutions for businesses on the go. It's completely free and you will find the link down below in the description as well. So simply head over there, get sign up and start chatting with us. We have weekly live calls as well, so you definitely don't want to miss it. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.